I wasted over a thousand dollars on an e-bike converting kit that failed in less than a month. I just want to help you guys not make the same mistake I did. I lost a lot of time and I basically missed the entire summer that I was planning on just e-biking everywhere. I got a Toe 7 DM01 because on paper the specs looked amazing. It was half the price of a CYC but it had a torque sensor. Um, it had a thousand watts of power. It supported high voltage. All of that, it all seemed like a bargain, honestly. Like it, it felt too good to be true. Then I got it and that's where the issues began. If you actually want to use the motor in like a fun way, you have to go into the advanced settings. Now, the thing with the advanced settings is it's locked. So you have to go into the forums, figure it out. And if you do do that, the company knows that you did it and your warranty is lost. And you really want warranty with this motor, let me tell you. I had the motor for less than a month. First week, I was super happy. I was going everywhere. I, th I think I did 200 kilometers in the first week alone. I tested like the limits, like how, how big of a hill could it climb, just everything. I was having a blast. But then it slowly started having issues. Like uh, towards the end when it failed, there was an issue where the motor would disconnect. Like it would show a warning and it said the motor disconnected and it would keep turning off for some reason. Like my BMS would keep going off and say, um, over discharge current protection. And then the next day I went for a ride. Luckily it wasn't far away and the motor failed. It, like the controller failed. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't work anymore. And the issue with the DM01 is that it has a bushing where it makes it really hard to pedal without the assistance because of the bushing. Like it feels like you have your brakes on at 20% and you're still trying to pedal. So I wrote it back home. I sent the screenshot or the photo to Pill 7 and luckily their support is really good, really impressive how good their support is. Like shout out to Kate. She told me she could send the parts and I could replace the controller, but I did not want to do that because a controller failing in under 400 kilometers under a month is, is not something that you want to deal with over and over again. Like if it already failed in under a month, like it could fail another time, right? I didn't want to deal with it. Plus you'd have to take the motor out do all this stuff. It's just, it's, it's so much time wasted that you don't get back, right? I'd rather ride my bike and have fun than worry about if my motor is going to break and say I went further and having to bike back from like super far with the issue of the bushing, it would be horrible. So I just didn't want to deal with it. And I requested for a refund. I luckily got my refund, everything, I, it was fine, right? But that whole thing wasted almost a month because now I have a 60 volt battery that I can't use with anyone other than CYC or 207. I looked at the other brands and I really want you to save yourself the time, money, and frustration and just go get a CYC like I should have from the start. Like the saying goes, buy nice or buy twice. It's honestly super true and I keep learning about it over and over again instead of just implementing the philosophy, I guess. That's not the only issue um, with the Toll 7 DM01. The other issues were that it didn't feel as good as the specs led on. You might think it's half the price of the CYC, but it has a torque sensor, a thousand watts of power, etc., etc. right? But that's not the whole truth. You're losing out a lot of quality. It doesn't have a sine wave controller, which means the motor is less efficient. It's less smooth. Um, you can't control the parameters of the motor. Like it has like, it weirdly has some crazy settings available to the end consumer, but it doesn't have the simple settings available. Like it doesn't allow you to adjust the ramp up time. Like CYC does. It doesn't allow you to adjust, um, how your, how your, uh, throttle functions it doesn't allow you to adjust the max amount of torque on throttle it just doesn't allow you to do that, but it allows you to um, other crazy things like pull pairs or whatever, like, like engineering stuff. Another issue with the DM01 was the torque sensor was laggy. It had, um, ramp up time, which made it feel like even without the torque sensor. So if I would hit the throttle, I'd have to wait for it to slowly ramp up until it, it ramped up to the RPM and give me like torque. And if 
And sometimes it would just hit like super hard, um, which would destroy my um, pre-wheel or cassette or whatever, like you know, the back of the hub, right? It would just destroy that. Luckily, it didn't destroy it super bad, but it did do damage to it to the point where the engagement suffered quite a bit. On paper, it looked good. On paper, it seemed like I'll be saving half my money and I'll still get a torque sensing, a thousand watts, whatever, whatever. But in reality, it wasn't all that. So I just want to advise you guys to get a CYC. Like, just don't bother with these cheaper motors. So let's take a look at the different motors and see what they offer. So we have the Fang with the BBS HD, a thousand watts of power, 1500 peak, I believe, you know, the classic. It's compared to everything as the gold standard. People make videos about it saying the, the Fang BBS HD killer is out and it's usually a Toe 7 or a Tongsheng motor or whatever, but it's not true. I wouldn't recommend buying a BBS HD ever. Like the company Bethany that sucks, they don't support their consumers or the DIY market. I mean, it has a cadence sensor. It's only 52 volts. It doesn't have an app. It doesn't have support unless you buy it through like third party dealers. And to get the same amount of power as you would with the X1 Gen 4 Pro, you'd, you'd be spending the same amount of money, but you'd have a jankier setup. So cadence sensor over 10 years old, it's just not practical to buy it. Don't support Bethany. They suck. Now Toe 7, if they fixed some of the issues they could they could have a nice market in the budget category like it, it still has square taper cranks which are super flexible the, you're not going to do some crazy off-roading and if you're a heavier guy just don't even bother it won't be fun they have a torque sensor and they support up to 60 volts for only 40 amps which is about 1400 watts and then you have no app but really good support, honestly. Th that was my first time experiencing Chinese like support. Like, and it was honestly better than a lot of support I've seen in the Western side. It was really good. So DMO1 is a newer product and the DMO2, DMO line is a newer product, right? But again, limited amps and you can't control the phase amps. You can't control anything. It's, I'd only recommend a DMO1 if they fixed their controllers, first of all, like they can be failing, like that's, they can be happening, right? And if they made customization a bit better, but they have potential, I'd say. Now let's move on to Tong Shang. Uh, I don't have much experience with these motors, but I've seen someone on uh, YouTube get the TDZ8 and from the video I saw, it, it wasn't really good. Um, he was having issues with it, of it turning off or overheating or something like that. And it only supports 48 volts, like natively. It's just going to be less efficient. Uh, there's no app and uh, I don't believe there's any support either with Tong Shang. It kind of just SOL, honestly. Now let's move on to CYC. I think everyone should just buy a CYC, honestly. Save yourself the time and honestly the money. Like genuinely save yourself the money because I built a DM1 and it had a, I had to build a custom battery. 60 volts. I can't really use that battery anymore. Like, and none of the other motors support it. So, uh, my only option is Toe 7 or a CYC. And if I knew, I would have just gotten a CYC with a 72 volt battery instead of half assing it. So, again, buy nice or buy twice. And I wasted way more money going with the Toe 7 that broke that I had to make, uh, that I had to make a custom battery for. And then I would have, if I just went CYC right away. And I would have way more fun and I'd have my entire summer to enjoy it, which I missed out on, you know, that's the worst thing. It's not the money. It's the whole summer's almost over. So why should you buy a CYC instead of the rest? Well, they support their consumers. So the DIY market, they support them. Um, if you watch any of their videos, they're super open. Um, they talk about the updates, um, they thank their consumers and they also innovate and push the limits. So the X1 Gen 4 is on its fourth generation. It has over six kilowatts of power. I've seen it go 6.5, I think. Um, their motors are completely different from the others. They're higher and they have a narrow wide chain ring with a sine wave controller, which means better efficiency and the chain stays on. And they also have ISIS 
um, cranks instead of square taper, which are stronger and don't come as loose as um, like square taper. Square taper is a budget old crank. Like mountain bikes don't use that anymore. They're just a higher quality motor. And to think of the little things that won't really impress on the paper, like people might not care if they have a sine wave or square wave controller, but it does make a difference. And that's the point of CYC. They do it for the love of the game, at least from what I've seen. They also have good support. Like I've talked to them a bit and it's been pretty good. They also have an app. This is a major, major advantage, bro. You can control everything on the app. Like you can control the ramp up time, how, how torquey it is. How does it come on with the power? Everything. I'll, I'll show, I'll put it on the video. I'll show you their video. It's just super awesome how it has an app and you can control everything and it shows you and it shows you all the stats and stuff and they support up to 72 volts which is awesome because that's higher efficiency higher top speed more rpm it is better overall and their torque sensor is better and they also have a photon gen 2 coming which competes with the the bbs 2 the dmo2 and the tdz 8 but honestly it's probably going to be better obviously it's going to be better and I believe I read it somewhere that it'll be up to two kilowatts, but don't quote me on that. You do get a premium product for, well, a premium price. Like they're not just price gouging you, you know, for no reason. So I'm going to reach out to CYC and hopefully I can get a coupon code for you guys. When I get my CYC, I'll make a full video on it and, uh, just everything. Can't wait. Anyways, thanks for watching. I just wanted to make a quick comparison video to save you guys time and money. So yeah. See ya.